Please welcome on stage NEOS core team member John Ullmann. So, hello also from my side. Um, it's funny, my teacher didn't tell me that, told me that I have a good English, so thank you for that. And I'm also excited that the first row is getting filled because normally it's always empty, so we're not in the church here. You can go in the front. Yeah. I'm talking about this one here. All others are bullshit. I made the experience that many people are quite missionary when they talk about their beloved CMS. So that's why I choose this title. But I first want to talk about some. Now it's working. About some perspective. It depends where you're looking at. For s someone it's called, yeah, yeah, have a boat, I'm saved. The other one say, yes, here's land, I'm saved. The other one, you all probably know, one guy says this is six, the other one say this is nine. So, I wanna challenge you, be peaceful. There's no bashing, there's no, this is a bad one, this is a bad CMS, it's not about that, it's about getting an overview about different topics. And about which topics I'm gonna talk about, I show you now. First one about the user experience and about the developer experience. I call it DX and the other UX you probably know. What the user experience when he's working with that, when he is in the back end and the on the other side what we are experience when we have to build a website with this kind of application. In the second row I am talking about the field of application. Is the CMS really the right CMS if we want to make a multi-language site for, for example or this kind of stuff. And last but not least I'm talking about the community. How is the community built? Is there's some danger, is there some good part, some bad parts. So I hope I can give you an overview about all this kind of stuff. So about which system I'm going talking about. First, the biggest one, perhaps you heard about this one, it's called WordPress. Secondly, Typo3, it's in this area one of the largest. Then another one, it's from Austria, it's called PIMCore. And I don't know if you heard about the next one, it's called NEOS. I love it, so I choose it to put it in this presentation. And um, I thought about, about Jamstack, but Jamstack is not a CMS, so, but I just want to explain something why it's in these slides. What is Jamstack? Did you already hear, heard about this? You know what Jamstack is? It's quite cool. Jamstack is, um, it means J is for JavaScript, A for API, and M for markup. So with Jamstack you can build website statically. You know perhaps Gatsby, and you in, in the back end you have some system or so markdown or whatever and this creates dynamically the static sites. So there is in today I think tomorrow is a talk about this. Also on this stage I think about Gatsby and Neos and I'm really excited to he uh, hear this talk because um in many cases it's it's so much faster and uh, if you have a large website with a lot of static content you can win a lot of that. So and why I build this also here, I want to say if the CMS has already integration in some kind of gem stack, because it's the new hot shit in JavaScript world. So, we starting with WordPress. First, 
the good part, I think the the front end in uh, in the administration, the front end UI is even for dummy or beginners, it's very intuitive. There's a big big plus for WordPress, and uh, some other parts, it is very easy to extend. You can easily extend it to your kind of functionality that you want. And it has a another one, it was really good, it has a really a flat learning curve. You're really fast, you're into WordPress and almost everybody can do WordPress. Another good part is that there are no breaking updates. And there are also fast updates. That's really a, a strength of WordPress. On the other side, the bad part, you have a really a lot of spaghetti code. So almost everything is done directly in the template with many if else. And in general the, the code and the database structure is very very weak. So if you try one time to change the domain of a WordPress site, you also have to change some directly in the database, for example the, the URL and all that kind of stuff. So it's annoying. And without without plugin ex and extensions, it's not very effective for modern websites. So just out of the box, the plain WordPress, it's not that good. And because you have a, a mix with these agencies and WordPress plugins and WordPress build block builder stuff, all this kind of stuff decreases the customer willingness to pay for complex adjustments. So because they say, yeah, I, I found a theme here, just copy this. So that's not that kind of nice. And because there's no code style, the structure is very fast, it's lost. So that's the bar bad part. Um, I have to say, for all this system, I interviewed some guys who are working with this system, even for NEOs. There's no personal opinion inside this slide. So, it's really important. It's not my opinion, it's some opinion from a other current team member. So, secondly, Typo 3. Who of you has worked with Typo 3? Almost everyone, me also. The good part is that almost everything is possible. It's kind of the Swiss Army knife. And another really good part is that it has a really very uh, a fine granular uh, write system. So you can adjust very exactly which user can edit something and look at and just um, publish and all this kind of stuff that's really really well done and nicely done. And on the other side that the bad part is that there's really a steep learning curve. You have to learn TypeScript, you have to learn some concept and all this kind of stuff. And the back end is uh, quite conservative. It uses jQuery and it is very hard to replace something. I think this is better, getting better and better, but at the moment it's, it's like that. And there is, some of you may say that's not important. Our customers say it is important. So there is no native front-end front -end editing. Maybe that's a bit of sound, so. And many times it you use a sledgehammer to crack a nut. So you just <laughs> smash it. Pimcore. Who of you knows this? I think, yeah, wow. Quite a lot. A very good thing here is that it has a very clean structure. It is easy, extendable. And uh, some of the main features also the targeting that it's very easy to implement and it's very easy to to get this thing up and running for that. 
the bad part is, and some people may say that's a good part, but for me, it's a bad part. And for the other guy too, I ask, it uses XJS. And that's quite ki kind of the flash of JavaScript. So it's not that easy to, to use and you have some errors. And if you have to work with Jobware, for example, it's, it's many, many times a pain in the ass to use this kind of library. That's why they also switch to view. And for me, I'm not a PHP programmer. So this is also a, a bad part that you have everything you have to do directly in PHP. So you don't have a kind of integrator. You have to be a programmer that you can do some advanced stuff. And another bad, bad part is that you have to, that you can, that you're able to enter SQL directly that you can put it in the program code or that they use it like that. And so there's no abstraction layer. You can change it to, to another database system. And with that, it's also easier to have some dangerous errors in the code. And the learning curve is quite steep. So, but I think that's almost for every CMS that the learning curve is always steep and getting more advanced and more steeper. Drupal, one of the biggest CMS in the world. What is quite fascinating and exciting about this is that it has almost every API out of the box. You have GraphQL, JSON, all this kind. It's API first driven in, in this kind of point. And you have a I don't know, do you work with NEOS or you just, yeah, yeah, it could be possible that you just look at NEOS. So in NEOS you have to, to write your code for creating the node structure. And in, in Drupal you have a tool where you can just click your stuff together. That's quite nice. At the end you get also code, but you can just make it in an interface and that's quite nice. Another good part is that you have distribu distributions for specific field of applications. So, for example, there's a, a spe specific application for some big churches in America where they can have a Drupal installation for all the kind of stuff they have to do. Um, and another good part is that the backend accessibility is very good. So, it's even accessibility before the UI. Op I, this is, I don't know if this is the right way, but they decided that way. But I think it's good to have a, a CMS in the market who has a good accessibility. Because m many, many people forget all about that all the time. The bad. You can do many, many things in many, many ways, even for the editor. So it's can be confusing that you can create a menu entry in, in five modules on different pages. So it's not, sometimes it can be overloaded for that. And if you wanna wanna start with Drupal, you have to understand now many concepts with the version eight uh, completely rewritten. So the people have to learn very much now to, to get used to Drupal. So the learning cor curve is also very steep. And so now other part, uh, the backend doesn't look that fancy. And as we know, this is quite important, especially for customer. If you say, look, your backend looks that sexy. Oh, I want this. It's important. Neos. We don't have any good here, so we jump. No, we have some. <laughs> The good part is that it's very, a very flexible interaction between data preparation and presentation. So we have no imposed themes. You can do whatever you want. And one of the unique points, we have a real living style guide with atomic design. It's very easy to implement data. It's really great and awesome. 
and the operation for the content editor is very easy to learn. You don't need that much school for them, you don't have to teach them all the time, it's so easy. And the framework underlying is very powerful, as you may know, it's called Flow. And also a good part is that the community is extremely easygoing and helpful, but it's more in the community part, but the guy just wrote me this here. And another good part is that you know don't need PHP knowledge to create complex pages. Why is this good? Some of you may, may say, yeah, but I know PHP, yes, but not everybody know this. And if you have some young guys who love JavaScript and want to do all this kind of stif stuff, you can say, yeah, you can use Neos, but you don't have to touch any PHP, so don't, don't worry. And th I think it's quite nice. The bad. The difficult, it's very difficult to entry. There are tons of things to learn, including proprietary languages like Fusion, with all their special cases. There are not that much learning material on the web. It's getting better and better now, but at the moment we have not this huge um, assets for learning NEOS. And also the documentation needs improvement. In the last year we made a lot of improvement there, but we have to go further and further for that. Another bad is that uh, the penetration rate is very low, so not many sites compared to the others using it. It's a very small CMS, so but the best for me, but it's very small. Okay. WordPress. WordPress is very good if you have some small, medium-sized websites, smaller shops perhaps, and of course blogs. Yes, WordPress can do blogging. <laughs> it was the intended to be a blog system. And at the same, pa same size uh, point that the guy said to me it's for smaller shops it's okay he said to me yeah but he wouldn't use it for e-commerce systems so even there is e-commerce something like that don't use it for a shop system and also if you have more complex websites with many languages on this kind of stuff it's not that funny to, to work with WordPress Typo 3 Typo 3 is very good for large multilingual websites with many special building features where you have some business cases and all this kind of stuff inside of it. It's very good, but it's not that great for, for blogs or for shops or community pages. It's just not made for that. You can do it if you want, but it's not the, the main topic. You see, it, um, I don't know how many tries and error there was because about uh, integrate a shop system into NEOS. There were many tries and no one succeeds so because it's not that easy so that's I think but it's a kind of problem for, for every CMS. So PIMCore. I think it's one of the rare CMS who's very good at shops. It's great for shops and it's great for complex websites but it's not that good for really small sm uh, small websites because we have a, s a lot to do always. Drupal in the version 8 it's great for large and complex websites and also great for software for services like I told you this distribution packages for churches in America for example. And also here the same as many systems for what is not that good, the SU table is for small websites. Neos. It's very powerful for medium to very large pages with custom programming. With custom behavior, it's just awesome. 
but I don't use it. I don't would really use it for little blocks. I would rather switch to something like Ghost. If you don't want to use WordPress, I wouldn't use WordPress, so I use Ghost for that. Um, yeah. Community. That's because of the heart, because it's all about love. Um, what's the strength of the WordPress community? It's the quantity. You have a lot of love of people inside this community. And because that's a so large distribution, there are extremely many extensions, implementations, ideas, and plugins. That's a strength. But the weakness on the same side is that it's often very difficult to find uh, expertise with deep knowledge because everybody can do WordPress. That's a problem. And on the highest level of of the people in the community, there there happens a lot of bashing to other system when they're getting too dangerous in their eyes, like like Ghost. There was a lot of bashing going on that wasn't that cool. And I don't know if you know it, but the owner of WordPress is a company. So yes, it is open source, but it's not open source driven. It's company driven. So the last word always to have this one company. And you may say that's, that's good. That's a good point. For me, it's a bad point because I, I know what a good community, community can do. I experienced this in the Type 3 community. I experienced this in the Neos community. So it's quite of a danger. Type 3, in the German-speaking area, it has a big, really a huge community. Uh, and you get to know a bunch of great people. Many friends I have, they are coming from the background, from Typo 3, from this family. So they're really, really nice people in there. And the weakness of the community is that sometimes the, the sound is a bit rough. Yes, I know we have all a lot of work to do, but sometimes it's, it's quite rough. And certain exposed persons, they're sometimes bashing other system and I think if you have a great system, you don't have to, there's no need for doing that. You know, even when I'm talking now about this, I'm not bashing anyone and not any system. It's not about that. And another weakness is that if you have some change requests or pull requests, that many of these things are gonna die because it's too much, too much discussion on, on this certain point. Especially if you have a review to make, it's, it's really hard to, to get something into the core. So, PIM core. The strength has a strong local community in group. And the other strength is that the, the community is supported by the manufacturer with two persons. But if this is going to be stopped one day, it's, it's quite of a risk. But at the moment, it's okay. And the weakness is that you are not able to find some solution with Google or something like that. It's all in this closed group. So there's no, no, you just don't find it. And another thing is that it's also a, a open source owned by a company. So very, very much of the core code just depends on the PIM core employees. If they leave or just go or it, them, the company says we, we change the direction, you have no chance. I think that's always dangerous when open source is managed, is managed by money and not by enthusiasm. Drupal. The strength is that one of the biggest community in the world. Also a strength, there are no paid plugins. There are many, many associations. 
and Nico, the guy, is also here. When you have to, when you want to talk about with him about Drupal, it's quite nice. He said to me, Drupal is free and not owned by a company. So he also shared the same view as many people that it's quite dangerous if open source is owned by a company. Weakness of the community, it's not that easy to get in. I mean, it's easy to get in the community, but it's not that easy for uh, just want to do a small website because the learning uh, curve is so steep. And last but not least, NEOS. What's a strength of the NEOS community? It has an extreme friendly and sociable tone. If this is not happen always, I know, I'm sorry for that. Just go to a core team member and tell me about it. It's not the case normally. It has a great helpfulness inside the community and there are also no paid plugins. So of course there are private packages, that's normally, but if something is available, it's you can use it for free. And the weakness is that it's very, very small compared to the other one and it's not that easy to grow for us. I mean we're working hard on it but it's kind of challenging. So what I want you to do always, not just for today or or in the next month, always look over the edge of your plate. Challenge yourself, try new stuff. Even if it's in the Neo ec NEOS ecosystem, somebody comes with a new idea, challenge yourself, yourself, try it. If this is suitable for you, if not, you just have some good experience and open your re view for also for other system. Because man, there are many, many great ideas around. We can improve with that also our system. We, if you have an idea, if you saw something great, how they handle some kind of problems, um, we can improve also NEOS with that. So that's really, really great. And now it is time to the strange wording Toby told. Here it sa says, Merci viel mal. That means thank you very much. If you want to have a look again at the slides, you have here a QR code, you can just um, grab the slides there, they're online. At the end, it's also gonna be announced by the conference team where the slides are living. Yes, it was great to have you here and see you next time.